Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecture in Computing at the National College of Ireland, and welcome to my series of short problem solving techniques videos. In video number 17, we're going to take a look at force field analysis. So first off, what is a force field analysis? Well, we use it to identify the forces in place that support or work against the solution of a problem so that the positives can be reinforced and the negatives eliminated or reduced. So it's primarily about identifying the positives and negatives of a situation that we find ourselves in and when we want to improve or change something. So what does a force field analysis do? Well, first, it presents the positives and negatives of a situation so that they are easily compared. Secondly, it forces people to think together about all the aspects of making the desired change a permanent one. Thirdly, it encourages people to agree about the relative priority of factors on each side of the balance sheet. You can see in, um, a draft of one here. And finally, it also encourages honest reflection on the real underlying roots of a problem and its solution. So how do we create a force field analysis? Well, it's primarily done using a diagram with lines and arrows. No special tools or software or equipment is required to do a force field analysis. You can do this on a whiteboard, on a flip chart, or with a piece of paper and your favorite pencil. The first thing we do is, at the top of the chart, we state the problem. And sometimes that's quite difficult to do, but do this in, in a very short sentence and identify what the problem it is or the issue that you are trying to fix or change. And then the main part then is you draw a T and large black lines as I have done here. Draw a T so that we can add information to our diagram. So this is the starting point for our force field analysis. Next, at the top right hand side of your flip chart or, or whiteboard or whatever you're using, describe the ideal state. So if this is a problem you are trying to resolve, put the solution up here. If this is a process that you are trying to improve, put the new status up on the right hand side. In other words, we want to be able to see where we are now and what we would like to get to, because we want to identify the forces that will help us get there and also the forces that are stopping us getting to the ideal state. Next, on our T, we list on the left hand side all the driving forces that we can think of, and on the right hand side, all the restraining forces that prevent us from reaching the ideal state. And then we brainstorm ideas. First, I brainstorm all the driving forces ideas, all the things that are positive, all the things that are good, that are helping us right now to get to the ideal state. We're not there yet, but what are the driving forces, the positives? On the right-hand side, you want to identify the negatives because these are the restraining forces that are pushing us away from the ideal state. So that's why the arrows are drawn in the directions that you see here. Sometimes in some types of force field analysis, you will see um, thicker arrows for stronger driving forces or longer arrows uh, and so on. But basically, we're going to stick to the type of arrow that you see here. So this is a template for any simple force field analysis. So let's take a look at an example. And here's a classic example involved in the problem statement is that you would like to improve a person's ability in public speaking. So our problem statement is improve public speaking. And the ideal state that we would like this person to reach would be that they would be able to, in public, speak confidently. So within our team or within a group or workshop, sometimes works best for brainstorming, uh, we brainstorm all the driving forces and all the restraining forces. Now, there are lots of positives and negatives that might uh, help or prevent a person to speak confidently, but I'm just going to use a selection of examples here. So the driving forces, I'm identifying four. We could, a driving force for speaking confidently would that somebody would be able to get an increased self-esteem. It would help their career. It would help them communicate ideas better. It would also help others to change. And I'm sure you can think yourself of many, many more positives or driving forces that would help somebody speak confidently in the problem of improving their public speaking abilities. When you've done that, go back and do a, a brainstorming session on the restraining forces or the negative forces. And again, a selection of these might be things like uh, somebody has had a past embarrassment in when they were speaking publicly. They're afraid to make mistakes. They may actually forget what to say. Or possibly they're worried about a lack of knowledge in the area that they're speaking about. And I'm sure, once again, you can think of many, many more negatives or restraining forces that push a person away from speaking confidently. So these are the forces that are driving us towards confident speaking and the forces driving us away. The negatives are restraining us from achieving the ideal state. What we do then is that we 
hone in or we concentrate on the individual items that have been selected. I'm just going to select one here to keep this video short and under one of the restraining forces is that uh, a person may forget what to say. So that's a restraining force preventing somebody from speaking conf confidently in a public speaking situation. But it is relatively straightforward to overcome. For example, you might use index cards uh, for somebody to write down notes so that they wouldn't forget what to say. Or use PowerPoint or bullet points or something like that to help somebody uh, get over the fear or the negative of forgetting what they might say. And I'm sure you can also think here uh, about other ways of overcoming some of these negatives or restraining forces on the right, or indeed enhancing the driving forces or the positives on the left-hand side. So in a task like this, you can get many, many ideas to improve the driving forces and to eliminate or reduce the restraining forces. So that's a simple way of looking at force field analysis. If you like this problem-solving technique, there are many others covered in my new book, An Introduction to Business Systems Analysis, uh, available on Amazon and online, published by the Livy Press. Um, I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for your attention.